We're gonna go into different strength training modalities that you can use in the women's population. And we're gonna start right now. So right off the bat, one of the biggest things that I have always talked about and always brought to light is that most of resistance training research, most of sports performance research has been done on men. I don't know the exact number of papers, but in my experience, I feel like it's at least 90 to 95%. Again, this is totally anecdotal, totally off the top of my head. But the issue here is that if we have a population of athletes, okay, and especially over the last 15 to 20 years, we've seen a massive increase in that population of women, okay? So if we're looking at athletes, right, and then we say 30 years ago out of 100 athletes, probably 70% of them were men, 30% were women. Now we're at the point where those percentages are very likely pretty equal. Even in our case here at Garage Strength, a vast majority of the athletes that we train actually are women. So we are training women and we're looking at this and there's not a ton of research on women, okay? So we can see in our own setting that most women are wired a little bit differently as far as their sports performance is concerned, as far as their muscular hypertrophy levels are concerned, as far as their twitch types, all of these things are gonna be slightly different from men. And so we've gotta be able to look at what type of research is out there that's gonna enable us to further their training so that we're not just training women as though they're little smaller dudes, okay? So that's one of those big aspects. Now, fortunately, there has been a recent paper right here, okay, the effect of different strength training modalities on sprint performance in female team sport athletes, a systematic review and meta-analysis. So in this case, they're looking at women's team sports. They're gonna be looking at what happens with strength training modalities and their relationship to sprint training, okay? So if we're thinking about basketball as a court sport. We're looking at potentially handball, lacrosse, field hockey, uh, soccer. That's gonna help us see, okay, those sports carry over to sprint-based training. If we're looking at strength training modalities in this specific case, we could even think about how this would carry over towards sports like softball as well, and even track and field. And that's what the specific purpose of this paper is. Let's identify if there's an actual difference and then how we can implement it. So anecdotally, before we even get into this paper, I wanted to share some of my own personal experiences, especially uh, with women in strength sports like throwing, weightlifting, and other athletic ventures. So from my own personal experience, okay, so uh, this is involved with training women to the world championships level, training women to the Olympics, and especially in power sports like throwing and like weightlifting, I have found that women can handle a bit more training volume. So about 1.25 times the volume of what men can handle, even per se as, as going heavy. They can go heavier at a more frequent point relative to their max. And I've even seen you know women like Yaime Perez, Haley Reichert, who have vertical jumps of 27 to 32 inches, which is absurdly huge. They can hit those vertical jumps and they can hit it really, really repeatedly for five or six sets inside of one training session and then on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas if we had men doing that, we would see about a two to 5% decrement on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's one big aspect that I wanted to bring up. If we're looking at this study from Hughes, they're gonna be analyzing the research and what lower body strength training can do for sprint performance in women while also looking at specific modalities like reactive training, maximal strength training, and then combined training and special strength work as well in team sports. So that's essentially what they were looking at, right? They're looking at, okay, what is going on? And so if we look at this, they had 15 studies. These 15 studies were included in the final analysis. The 15 studies represent a total sample size of about 362 par participants. They looked at 17 intervention groups and 15 control groups. So the big thing here, like we mentioned, they're looking at zero to 10, zero to 20, zero to 40 meters, all in meters, right? And then they're gonna go, okay, the magnitude of improvement in sprint performance was influenced by the strength training modality. So if we're looking up at the top here, some of the background, most of this will come back to the aims of the systematic review were to investigate the overall overall effect of lower body strength training on sprint performance, the effect of specific strength training modalities, which is gonna be reactive, maximal, combined, and special strength on sprint performance. So when we're looking at that, the big factor is, is what ends up being the results. 
okay, what actually occurs. And for more gains for women, we're found in the zero to 20 meter group and the zero to 40 meter group. And the reactive group and the combined training had greater improvements in sprint performance than maximal and strength training modalities. So what that means is if we can do some type of concurrent training where we're gonna develop maximal strength and reactive strength at the same time. That's what we want to be focusing on. Okay, so the researchers also found that younger athletes under the age of 18 had greater sprint improvements in comparison to those that were 18 years of age or older. So that does make a, quite a bit of sense where it's like, all right, well, if you're over 18, you've probably been training a little bit more. And that's another big factor here is that a lot of women don't start strength training until they're 16 or 17. Whereas with boys, men, they tend to come in a little bit earlier, let's say 12 to 14, depending upon their parents. Okay, so this analysis also supports the use of a longer program duration. So if you were in a training situation or a training environment that you train for more than eight weeks with a higher total number of training sessions, so more than 12 sessions, there would be an improvement in overall sprint performance. So if we can get one, younger girls to train more, strength train more, do more plyometric work, uh, do more reactive work, do more strength training, more maximal strength training work, do a concurrent system. Train more than 12 sessions in eight weeks. Try to train 12 weeks, try to train 16 weeks, try to train 50 weeks out of the year and try to get two to three sessions in every single week. That's how we're gonna lead to that greater sprint performance. So I'm gonna go into specifically on the screen so we can share this with the results and then go into the conclusions. The overall effects revealed small improvements in sprint performance in favor of the experimental group over zero to 10 meters. Moderate improvements over sprint distances of zero to 20 and zero to 40. So the magnitude of improvement in sprint performance was influenced by the strength modality. Again, we talked about that a little bit. Reactive and combined combined strength training methods had a greater effect than maximal or, sp or special strength modalities. So a lot of people might read that and be like, oh, maximal strength doesn't work, but it's really when maximal strength is combined with some type of reactive work. So this systematic review and meta-analysis demonstrated that when compared with a control group, technical and tactical training, the different strength training modalities exhibited small to moderate improvements in sprint performance in female team sports. So what are we gonna do, right? How can we take this as a strength coach? Basically, what they're saying here is this analysis also supports the use of a, a longer program duration with a higher total number of training sessions to improve overall sprint performances and this can be served as a guide. So what I ended up writing down was, all right, let's start off with one, educating women on how to strength train, educating women how to jump, educating women on sprint mechanics. That's a really novel idea, okay? Then the next thing, train three to four days a week for very, very long periods of time. Three to four days a week, very long periods of time. That means maximal work, that means hypertrophy work, that means sprint mechanic work, that means plyometric work, long periods of time throughout your entire career, okay? And then discuss their training with their sport coach. That's the next key. It's like, if I'm training female swimmers, or if I'm training, in this case, for sprint, for sprint mechanics, if I'm training soccer players, I need to be communicating what we're doing in the weight room with their coaches, okay? And then finally, it's very likely that contrast training has a massive effect on women. I believe, and this would be the overarching thesis, so if you're still with me at the end of this video and you even made it through that Peak Strength plug, where you should go over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and you downloaded Peak Strength so that you can improve your overall sprint performance as a woman. If you've made it to this point, this is my overarching thesis. I believe, and we we will see this in research. Women respond better to contrast modalities, meaning strength training. So we do like a set of front squats and then we would go do a box jump or we do a set of front squats or we do hurdle hops or we do a sled pull and then we would do a weighted sled pull and then we would go do a, a sprint of zero to 20 meters, something like that. I believe women, because they tend to be slightly slower twitch, I believe they respond way better to contrast training than men do, and men do respond well, but I think that women, especially after they form a base, let's say that they would train for eight to 12 weeks, they form a base of strength training, they form a base understanding of jumping, they form a base understanding of how to run properly, that as they get more and more advanced as athletes, we can start to develop them much greater with contrast training. And that even includes starting off their training sessions with some type of Olympic weightlifting movement. So you might see someone like Yaime Perez hit a hang snatch at 103 kilos which is what 230 pounds and then you might also see her do front squats with bounds and that's where I think getting more creative with your training getting a little bit more I guess risky in the sense of like look women can handle this they can train really well 
and then understand the physiological aspects behind that. So make sure you check out this paper. Again, this is from Hughes at all the effect of different strength training modalities on sprint performance in this video. And you even made it through that peak strength plug where you should go over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS store, and you downloaded peak strength so that you can improve your overall sprint performance as a woman in female team sport athletes understand what they can do make sure that you get everybody inside the weight room because remember freaks if you want to become a champion you've always got to cultivate your power peace